Welcome back. Well, as you probably know, 1993 will be the last time we'll see Stephen Roach in the Tour de France. The loquacious Irishman will be calling it quits at the end of this season. A highly fitting time then for us to hear a few of the thoughts and recollections of a man who's entered Tour history. Cycling won't be the same without Roach, and after 13 years as a professional, neither will Roach without cycling. Well, I think part of them will definitely, definitely go, yes, because it's, um, it's just, it's, 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 um, it's nature, it's, it's natural, I think it's, uh, like, today I'm idolised for my performance on and off the bike, whereas tomorrow when it's, when it's all gone, there'll be somebody else fighting autographs on the start line. It's unlikely that Roach's idolisation will end just yet. Over his ten years in the Tour de France, he's given us some of the race's finest moments, few more dramatic than his triumph at La Planière in the 87 Tour. Left for dead by his rival Pedro Delgado, Roach disappeared from our screen. His reappearance at the finish line made quite an impression on the Channel 4 commentary position. Again, Pedro Delgado has slipped Stephen Roach on the climb. But remember, at one point he had a minute and a half. And just who is that rider coming up behind? Because that looks like Roach. That looks like Stephen Roach. It's Stephen Roach who's come over the line. He almost caught Pedro Delgado. I don't believe it. Well, that was a day I didn't lose it to her. And when I arrived, everybody wanted to know, well, where'd you come from? Everybody was asking the same questions, and nobody was kind of saying, well, can I help you, Stephen? And, like, La Plan is, like, a 2,000 metres up in the sky, so the oxygen is already very scarce up there, so when you have 100, 100, 100, 100 journalists all on your back asking the same questions, like, there's very much, much oxygen left for the sport for the athlete. Stephen went on to win the Tour that year, receiving a rapturous welcome on his return to Dublin. With victory in the Giro d'Italia already under his belt, his win in the World Championships later that season meant a historic triple. Well, it was, you know, definitely a big moment because I wasn't really, like I went to the World Championships to win, but thought it was going to be, uh, you know, it wasn't possible because, um, like, also the fact that I'd already won the Giro and the Tour, so I was a very, very marked man. And the fact then that Eddie Merckx had won the Giro and the Tour, and, you know, the, the world is only himself has won the three of them together, so if I had won the world, it's going to be like, my name has gone into history, you know. Tears followed Stephen's achievement, but it marked the end, of course, of his golden period. A dramatic ride out of the fog at La Bourboul gave him a stage win in the 92 Tour, but memories of recent races are indelibly coloured by the disaster in 91. When misinformed of the start time of his team time trial, he was still warming up when his squad left. Five minutes late, Roach found himself disqualified on the Tour's opening day. If somebody had looked for me, they'd have found me, no problem. And uh, they went off without me. There was like three directors and three spaniers, and not even one of them waited for me, like or even looked for me, like. So um, you know, it was, a, it was a big, big thing, big, big, big um, heartbreak for me, really. You know. Always one of the world's most popular cyclists, Roach is now looking to the future, hoping to land a career in television, French, English, or Italian. He says. He also hopes to continue indulging his love of cars as a professional rally driver, but he knows it won't be easy leaving the cycling world behind. So I think it probably hit me when I do when I cross the line and trying to leave next Sunday. Then it will hit me that well. It is my last tour and we'll see what the direction is.